Should do the intro. Okay, great. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Beer Explaining. Hi. For the um, 27th of September. Fucking nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is episode, I want to say 30. That's a milestone. It means that we've been doing this for 30 weeks, uh, which actually isn't really a big milestone. It's not the fact that this is zero. We should have said something like our 26 long. That means we've been going for six months, right? Yes. But uh, whatever. We've done it a lot because uh, quarantine has been going on since <coughs> forever. Fred? March. March. March 17th. March 17th. Indelibly in my brain. So um, <laughs> welcome. Today we are going to be tasting black lagers. Black lagers. We have six <laughs> black lagers available for us. Uh, most are pretty local. Um, most are pretty fresh. Uh, apologies to uh, at least one because it's a little older, but it's a black lager. It shouldn't be affected that badly. Right, yeah, lager age so. by default. Yep, they take longer to ferment, so I would expect that it shouldn't get nailed with the issues you sort of have in if you drink like a six I bottle IPA. Yeah, I, I would, would think um, it's not going to age as well as like a stout or a porter. I'm right. sure. I would agree. Yeah, so, Shane, uh, why don't you give us some give us the drop on some black lagers? Well, tell us about them. We and we've discussed lagering in the past, which is really just as Corey said, a slower fermentation process, uh, bottom fermenting, uh, usually at colder temperatures. So the cultures go a little bit slower. They don't tend to have a lot of big flavors in them. Um, lagers tend to be um, a little on the malty side compared to your you know pilsners, which are also lager. Uh, I do actually like a good lager because it does have it's crisp. But got a little bit of the malty flavor, so I like them a lot. Black lagers just basically is more chocolate malt or roasted malts to give it that dark color, and they tend to add a little smoky flavor to it. So yeah. Definitely yes. have some smoky flavor. For yeah, sure. Yes, that's what you should be looking for. I think in a good black lager is a little bit of smoky flavor, a little bit of malty flavor, but nice and crisp. Uh, it's a blonde lager. <laughs> no, blonde's an ale. Blonde is an ale. Blonde is an ale. Uh, what are what other good examples of lagers? I think Schwartz beer, I think, is a lager. <laughs> Uh, Schwarzer well, is actually a black lager, right? Just about most of your German styles, Schwartz beers, Meritzens, those kinds of things are all lager. They're not lagers, they're lager. Yeah, but Schwartz beer, is, yeah. but Schwartz beer is basically just a black beer. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was the first beer I ever made in homebrew that actually worked out really And it worked out good. I agree. I'm really happy with um, everything's been downhill since then. Well, no, that's not true. The nitro, the Golden Scout actually worked out really nice. It was I so agree. long. There was just no alcohol. alcohol. There just yeah. wasn't a lot of alcohol in it. Um, and then, uh, you know, I fucked up several batches. It is easy to do. The home brewing is not easy. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? So uh, that's today's thing, black lagers. Black lagers. Um, the producers are setting up our drinks now. So yes. we are going to BS for a couple more minutes here about some stuff. Uh, anything interesting <laughs> happened this week that we want to beer explain up? Uh, let us think. Let us think. Uh, oh, there's a new Supreme Court Justice nominee. Yes. Uh, Amy Tony Barrett. Yes. She is a judge on the Seventh Circuit of Appeals. I think I got that right. I don't know. Uh, confirmed in 2017. Yes. Uh, the really interesting information out here is that she is um, clearly anti-abortion. I don't think there's uh, clearly any debate about that. Uh, and she's also on record as wanting to overturn both Roe v. Wade and the um, ACA. Yes. Literally on record for both. So yes. That's, that's great. Um, that's, how, that's how we want our Supreme Court judges to be decided people have already made decisions on the two most major things that they'll do that'll come before them right yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's so, exactly that's what great. you want in your Supreme court justice you also want them to be super young yeah and white uh, she's also on record as saying that you should not appoint a justice in a uh, election year if it's a big swing to the balance of the supreme court correct she's on record for that too she said that um, i'm assuming she just <laughs> thinks woman equals woman so it's <clears> not <throat> a swing this time or she's just a hypocrite like the rest of them um all of them so, Four years yeah. ago, we needed to get a justice appointed, even though it was an election year. Four years later, we need to get an election because or an appointment because it's an election year. And depending on which side of the table you sat on, you changed your mind. I did. I, I, I think it was crap back then. I, I think it's crap now. I think, I think honestly, the president's what, the president. He gets to do his job. Yeah, you know what? It's supposed to be. I agree. I think what I think, what I actually think, is that the only can't only any other Amy Tony Barrett appointment is um, completely legitimate. Um, yep. I think the Kavanaugh appointment was completely legitimate okay. as well. Those are legitimate situations where we lost Supreme Court justice, and because yes. our system is fucking stupid, um, the sitting president just gets to do them. Uh, I think the Gorsuch nomination was a fucking travesty. I agree. Uh, you know, and that's the one I have an argument with. Obviously. That's the one I have the biggest argument. Uh, yeah. You know, so the Comey Bear, the Coney Bear one is just an extension of that. Correct. To fucking Gorsuch, really. The only time I would say that a president, a sitting president, shouldn't would be Lame after duck, right? the election. Lame duck, right? After the election between November and January, and they lost. And they lost. 
That's I don't think they should do it then. The rest of the time, though, that's their job. They're supposed to do it. They our, should get to do it. Our entire government and the concept of lame duck sessions is fucking stupid. <clears throat> it is kind of. It is kind of. Yeah. You know, the yeah. founders made some good decisions, but they fucking made some bad ones too. I'm also, if anyone could explain to me the yeah, reason good. behind the restoration of the original flag, like what what's the point? What's the purpose? Is there some One, two, trend three. out there? Okay. For that, I don't get it. If someone would explain right. to me. I would appreciate it. So okay, one, two right. in the front. So right. uh, welcome any new viewers. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry if you uh, did not like our initial rants there for a little um, politics. Uh, if you're watching us on Facebook Live um, right now, you can ask us any questions you want. We'll be happy to answer them. That's true about anything. It's true about anything. Um, uh, I can't don't. imagine what we would answer. We don't always politically rant, but uh, sometimes we do. So yeah, that's just sort of how it works. So it's uh, our show. And uh, you just, if you don't want to watch, that out. You don't want to talk about it? If you do want to watch, though, go subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> that's correct. Or um, and follow us at... At Beer Splitting. At Beer Splitting on, on Instagram. Instagram. Uh, also, www. Well, actually, you don't need a www because that's antiquated. You just need beersplitting.com. That's correct. You go there, um, watch the YouTube videos there, and that'll give you a link to our actual YouTube channel because we're not fancy enough to have a vanity URL. No. Nope. So it's like ux 972 uad um, or something. Is it really? No. Well, I was yeah, going to no, say, if you no, memorize no. that, I would like No, it's really, it's really something like that. It's not actually that. <laughs> uh, so, oh, we don't have scoring sheets. I'm sorry, guys. We've got to pause. Technical difficulty. I'm a moron. So it'll be a sec. Shane, regard them with tales of something. <clears throat> tales of something. Okay, so, oh, well, I will. Um, yesterday, we went to a new brewery out in Modesto. Uh, 1790, I believe it, or is it 1780? I forget. Let me look it up. We went to a new brewery yesterday, 1780, I believe what it was. Um, they're brand new in Modesto. Really small uh, brewing facility. Really small... Um, set up, but I will tell you right now, great beer. Um, they had some outdoor seating set up on the sidewalk that was reasonably distant and um, sheltered. They had three beers. They had a black IPA, a West Coast IPA, and a blonde. It's kind of a red. And, and right, the, the West Coast IPA, I would have called a red IPA rather than just a West Coast IPA. It's a little maltier. They were fabulous. They were absolutely fabulous. They were probably, it's been a long time since I went to a brewery and we had three beers and really liked all three of them. So you should definitely check them out. Um, they were supposed to have a barbecue food truck coming. So, you know, you could get some your grub on, but uh, check them out. We loved them. We thought the beer was great. And we will be doing a um, tasting with them in the future with a couple of other new breweries out that, or a couple other breweries out that direction. Um, then we also went to, um, what is the name of that deli? Persuasion. Persuasion. I love that place. I love that place. First of all, you walk in, and it's a great little market. And they've got a wonderful beer fridge selection. Plus, nitro coffee on tap, which the producers really love. They have that? They have that, yes. When we went there the last time, Denise had some. It's on the left-hand side of the fridge. Right. So the beer selection was great. The beer fridge is great. And then they have a deli where you can get some great sandwiches. We had some yummy, yummy sandwiches. I remember going. Amber really likes the um, tri-tip sandwich. It looked great. Um, and then they have a tap house. All in the same building. And the tap house had something like 15 it's beers. It's a grocery store. And they do, they have three of their own. Uh, I had one of their beers. I want to say it was the Hazy IPA, which was really good. Really good. They had a nice outdoor seating area that they must have just constructed, put in some, some dirt and stuff. But it was, it was really comfortable, nice area, lots of seating. Um, it was later in the afternoon, so the shade was kind of intermixed because the sun angle, but I really it's liked it. Got the shade. It's, it's also good. a grocery store. Yeah, like a, a little market. Sure. Yeah. And, and a butcher. meat market. Yeah, butcher. And a butcher. I forgot the butcher shop. I forgot the, but the meat looked really good, too. So um, I like that place. We've been there a couple of times. It's kind of out there. You know, it's not really in, in town proper, I guess. It's like a half mile from downtown. Yeah. It's not too bad. <clears throat> but it's um, it's great, and we really like that place. So you yeah. should definitely check that out. Our third stop was uh, Church Key, which is just a, like a restaurant slash gastro punish sort of place. Yep. Yep. It was actually our third stop. It was actually our fourth <laughs> stop. Because we went from 1870 over to St. Stan's and found out they didn't open until four. Then we put our name in at um, we put our name in at, Con no, at, no, at Commons, Commonwealth. At Commonwealth. Yeah. And then um, didn't want to wait for that. We walked over to Church Key. It's really the fourth place we went. So, yeah, so. The third place then. Not if you well, only we if you don't count St. Stan's. Yeah, persuasion was last. Yeah, persuasion was fourth. But we're talking about church game. Yeah, but you said church game was fourth. 
that she's just she's just, just, I'm just, just correcting. <laughs> yeah, she's just correcting you. The Either way, we visited. Fifth, we visited church. church key. We went to three places and got beers. Yes, and Church Key was one of them. The beer selection there was good, but it seemed it was lighter than normal. It was lighter yeah, compared to normal. And I'm hearing that too that a lot of places are really having problems finding kegs right now. So um, that's what. But the food was okay. The nachos were pretty good. The the garlic tots were pretty good. Um, except for the frozen, frozen one, which was weird. really strange. I mean, how you get a frozen tot, but you know, notwithstanding that the food was good, the atmosphere was good. Uh, I really liked the layout in the back there. Yeah, it was nice, a little breezy yesterday, but I think that helped keep the temperature down. So I, I crushed these two at heart, so that's always fun. But that, that's exactly what happened. Yes, yeah. yes, I was doing well. It was something like 95 to 11 to 7, and somehow the amber got like three one point rounds in a row. Yes. And I got just destroyed. It was unfair, totally unfair. Taking was, taking on the seven of hearts, the queen of spades is bull. I'm just saying that it's bull. Anyway, I digress. What did you mean by they can't find kegs, like physical Re- restaurants? People are saying they're having a hard time getting kegs from of beers yeah. from maybe, breweries. Maybe breweries have lowered some of their their um, production because they can't open the tap rooms, so they're right. maybe producing a little less. Interesting. I think this was kind of, yeah. So well, and they just can't pay the employees either. Because well, I mean, tap, the, tap, open, the tap house is where you make your money because you're you're getting basically a 400% return on your keg. Keg sales aren't where they make their money? Oh, no, I wouldn't think Not so. compared to a tap house, no way. Oh. No, you got to figure, I buy a keg, say I bought this Burning Barrel keg for 120 maybe. Right. Um, and it's 40 pints, so I'm paying roughly $3 a pint for that keg. Um, if I go to Burning Barrel, I order that beer, I'm paying... Don't worry about that. Oh, so I'm paying six or seven. Six or seven pints. Oh, so, so tap room. Yeah, so, so you're, you're making money when you sell the keg, but you're making three and four times the money when you sell the, the yeah. glass in your own yeah. facility, So, which is why tap houses are important. And I, I had thought, don't. too, I do know that a lot of counties are going to get to start opening up limited indoor seating because... Uh, We're going to you know, open schools in about three damn weeks, so yeah. That's what it, I, I told the judge that. She didn't believe me, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah they, they That's are, what the numbers look like. Yeah, that's what they're, they're saying. Right. Yeah, because we went from... We beat to, yeah. their estimates for right. so, the so numbers. So Callie's going to go back to school? It'll be part-time, I think. They'll, do, they'll offer oh, a hybrid. hybrid. Yeah, it'll be like two days a week, half days or so. Yeah. All right, so we got beer. Um, and we, we, got, we have school sheets, maybe. which is, you know, so as it turns out, the fundamental things we require for a beer explaining episode um, are, in fact, in place now. Um, which is good. 30 times in, I got the day right and screwed up something else. So. <laughs> One of these days. Definitely so we have six beers in front of us. Uh, for the record, the back two is one, and then two, three, four, five, and six. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Making sure we have it right. You gotta make sure it's right. Left so to it's, right. Because it's going left to right. All right. So uh, typically in this show, what we do is we do appearance and we do smell first, um, just because we don't want the taste to sort of cloud us. Uh, so on appearance, I'm going to start on my appearance uh, judging here. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I don't know what any of these beers look that much different. Maybe, uh, maybe this, this one, one looks a little darker. This one looks a little lighter. I think. A little lighter. I think these two on the edges might be a little darker, but not much. I'm also looking at a, you know this one actually has some head on it. Yeah, I'll have a little bit head. There. Yeah, four. I like the head mm-hmm. on number three. I wish you could see more of it. I mean, it's, it's dark. I mean, I'm basically just going to go. This one's a little lighter, so I'm going to give it. This an is eight. the darkest here. I think the rest of them. Right. Number, number six, I think, might be the best looking beer. Just so I think it's the darkest. I don't, kind of I don't see much difference. I guess in the head you do see a little bit more. I feel like six is a little darker. I feel like six might be a nine and the rest yep. might be eights. Well, I'm going to give one a seven just because it is a tiny bit light. I think that's but I would go with an eight on the whole thing. Um, I'm actually just going to go eight. I think it's not. It's, not, it's, not, it's a little lighter. It's just a little light. I mean, I just want to give it something to distinguish it from. God damn shame. That's the next one. It looks the same from here. I actually think number four mm. looks this lighter unique. than the other one. This one? <laughs> it does look a little. It lighter. looks almost like a brown. Well, you get a flashlight and you shine through these things, right? Mm. Number one smells good. Um, so it, it, it must smell good. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, right. It's a flashlight. Oh, here. Let's borrow the flashlight here. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right. So, beer number one. Are you getting any light through it? Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks pretty dark. It's not too bad. Okay, so it didn't look dark on our side. Two. That one's dark. Darker, right? Than number one, right? Yeah. Okay. Dark. Number one. Doesn't seem to light us, and then number four, she's not going to be light too. That one looks pretty dark under the light, I think. Yeah, it's in between one and two. This one's kind of brownish, I can't tell I think, from here. a little bit. I don't know. These are these beers all look very, very similar. I mean, that's good. I mean, if we had one of these that didn't look like the other ones, I think that would be a clear sign that it's um, yeah. not quite what we're looking for. I mean, yeah, this beer is fucking dark. 
up here is dark, right? Okay, so that might be the darkest because no light. Number is five happen. actually got some light to it on the video. I think number six. Number six. Number six. Nothing. Number okay. five actually had some of the light come to it. All right. So okay. Um, oh, smell. Okay. So smell. So smell. in theory, what we should smell here is sort of um, some maltiness, like some chocolate, like some smoke, right? Yep. Yep. Basically, some similar smoke. to a cigarette smell. Similar, yes. <laughs> it is. It is. I get some. Corn. I get a little bit. No, no, I get. I get a little. I, it's not very heavy. Actually, I think two is even less. I think I have to smell. But I get something else in number two. I'm getting a different smell in there that's not just smoke. No, number two's got um definitely a different smell. It's got um I'm not sure what it is. A little more ale-ish, I think. Yeah, this maybe this is the common. It could be. It does kind of have that their common lager sort of smell. This might be the common lager. One of these is a black common lager, um, which uh, for those who do not know what a common lager is, um, it's effectively a steam beer. Yep. Um, popularized by Anchor Steam. By Anchor. Sorry, by Anchor, and the beer is called Anchor, Anchor Steam. Steam. Uh, so, but you can't call your beer an Anchor Steam. No, you can't. <laughs> That's copyrighted. So, consequently, that style of beer became called the California Common. Yes. Or a steam beer, but I think they, might have, they might have actually patented steam beer. So No, you can get steam beers. Oh, can you? Anchor did not patent steam okay. they, I, they, I Anchor always see them call the steam. name of the brewery. But yeah. they're, they're pretty much calling it, I think, they're doing the California, California Common, Common for a couple right, of different reasons. Beer. One, helps identify it regionally, and two... Mm -hmm. Most people, when they think steam, think Anchor Steam. That's just right. So you would, you know, even though it's not a trademark, it's like Xerox. Everyone knows that Xerox means photocopy. I don't even say copy this. I do now. I used to not. I used to say Anchor Xerox that. Not anymore. There's a lot of very similar smells here. Um, I'm agreeing. I'm not sure really getting much difference except number two. I actually think three has a different smell. I think three has a, a stronger of a smell. I can only imagine how great it is watching a smell beer on video. <laughs> <laughs> You really, I think got, it's you really gotta like us to watch 38 these high bread. Um so I'm gonna give um three my best score. Try that again. I feel like there's a dexter smell in this for me. Uh, I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm I give them all eights. But uh, I'm gonna go nine there. I like a little differentiation. I'm gonna go eights the rest of the way. Um, I don't quite get much differentiation, so I'm just gonna go eights across the board. I do think we're gonna enjoy these beers. I do too. I do think we're going to enjoy these beers. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, we should say we were going to do the barrel aging tasting. So if you tuned in this week to watch us do barrel aged tasting with uh, Grand Dog, uh, we had to veto that because it's 100 degrees outside and the show with Grand Dog has to be performed outside because he works in the hospital. So, yeah. And, you know, we want to, we want to be safe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so when the weather cools a little bit more, we're going to do the barrel aged tasting with Randy then. Uh, it's not like the barrel ages are going to go bad if we just, like, continue to age them. Right. So it seems okay to push that. I would agree. Yeah. So... All right, so uh, it, yeah, well, mostly eights. Uh, let's drink, I guess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, we're drinking. Right, we're drinking. It's good. I agree. It's a good black lager. Not a whole lot to it. It's crisp. I'd like a little bit more of the crispiness, but it's got a good uh, edge of the tongue, you know, maltiness, a little bit of the smoke flavor. Um, not too smoky. I think it's like over, I feel like I get a little over carbonation sort of. Uh, there is yeah, there is. My mm -hmm. tongue. I would agree that that's possible. Yeah, there's something. There is something in the middle of the tongue that's just. I wouldn't say off putting, but you know. I, I, I would drink. I would order a black lager. Like I've ordered black black lagers at Tapper. It's like one of the beers I would typically order if you have one. Um, you just don't see them. You really don't see them that often on tap. You really don't. Hmm. But not how to read it. Oh no, right? I think it's good. I'm gonna go with um. This is one of those tasters where I think like being first is probably going to be like detrimental to your I score. I think so, to be honest. I would agree. I'm going to try to be fair and try to score them all based on what I think of them individually. Um, I'm going to give this one a 24. I was going um, there as well. 24. Which I think Basically, gives me room, for, room for improvement if yes. one of the other ones I like better and also room for negatives if I don't like one as much. Um, I do this as a good beer. I'm not going to finish it though, so I can go back to it as a reference to flavor. Just in case. Um, so I'm going to go. I'm basically giving it 8. 24, 16, 24. Because it's good. It's not bad. I don't think it's great. I don't think there's a ton of aftertaste in it at all. Um, the, the but it's got is, is really light. It's got the proper, I would say. The Kate's fine. Um, Drinkability is probably the same, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I would give it a 24 as well. I don't think anything super different about that. 79. Um, 7, 15, 39, 45, 79. 79. And Nathan looking very much forward to the uh, footy tournament for the championship. Collingswood squeaked in. Looking forward to watching some games. But apparently... And this is this is a country that I think is doing things maybe the right way. So they're getting ready to play the football championships, right? 
And one of the teams. Just to clarify, we're talking about Australia. Australian rules football. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Is, footy. You should call their country out. Not footy. everyone, not everyone fucking knows what footy is. All right, it's footy. Even though one team has to fly from one side of the country to no, the other side not, of the country. It's not country. soccer. Oh, it's, it's not, not soccer. soccer. It's not. It's more rugby yeah. soccer combination. Um, by flying from the west coast to the east coast, they have to be quarantined for two weeks. Wow. Right? Shout out to Australia, by the way. I fucking love Australia. <laughs> Never been. Want to go? If you guys should go, we did our honeymoon there. We probably talked about it before. We probably yeah. told you guys that before. Oh, yeah. It's really great. We would go back. I would go back. I want to go and eat some koalas. I don't want to go to Sydney so I can check out the sites in Sydney. You the koalas. You don't eat the koalas? No. No, you get kangaroo though. Kangaroos are like roadkill there. And, really don't and wallabies in there? Koalas are endangered species. That's why you eat them. No. 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 <laughs> I don't think you eat the koalas. No. 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 You eat the roos though. You definitely, you definitely eat the roos. Eat the roo. yeah. Do you eat the little roos? Like baby roos? It's like veal? I don't recall saying oh. baby roo on the menus personally. Um, but they're basically roadkill. Like you literally have to watch out for them while you're yeah. driving down the road. And walking. Stay away from them. So they're mean motherfuckers. <laughs> they, they, they will stand and punch you as it turns out. I've seen videos. I've seen the videos too. Yeah, kangaroo will box the fuck out of you. Who knew? Well, everyone in Australia. But, I mean, as far as oh. stuff in Australia goes, they're probably the least dangerous. Everything else in Australia oh. fucking kills you. Oh, I have to know. Oh my. Oh, oh, is this too old? It might be the old I, one. It might be the old one. I'm thinking this is the old one. Oh, this is terrible. Yes. <laughs> All, right. Yeah. All right. This one, we're not even going to rate. Yeah, we're yeah. Because if, cause if, it, if Amber will confirm it's, Forget it's about number two. a year old. Oh, yeah. That's so good. Yeah, Forget no, about number two. We're not going to rate number two because we don't want to be not unfair. Yet. I've had this beer. I've had this beer fresh, and this beer is fucking good. Uh, this so beer yeah. is not good. This but. beer has gone bad. The beer has gone bad. So uh, apologies to uh, hey, apologies to, to our friends at local. Um, I've had the beer. It's very good. What's oh, a local? Will, yeah. It's one of my oh. favorites. Not not um, the local in Texas. Local SF. Local SF. Yeah. Local. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So it's a very good beer. Um, we are not going to rate it. I'm not going to put it in our scores um, on the site. Um, yeah. So I will give a quick shout out. I actually, they're actually one of my favorite breweries in San Francisco. Um, no, we do. And so, so yeah, this we is, want to be fair. This is not, we've we've had other beers during. So I think we've done a local beer tour in the tasting. Community. We have, um, mm-hmm. and typically rate them very well. Um, this is just a, this is just the beer's gone bad. It's sour. It's it's, old. it's it's gone too old. Uh, we thought it might go, but um, apparently not. Uh, what can you do? When you have a beer fridge and then another beer fridge and then a kegerator and then a regular fridge, sometimes beers just get lost in the back. And when I'm out there picking out the beers for this week's tasting, I'm like. Picking them out, and I'm just sort of looking through my beer, and I'm just like, oh, a black lager. We're doing black lagers this week. Throw it out. This tasting was supposed to be four beers we picked up last week. And uh, I'm in the fridge. I see another black lager. Do it. I throw it in. Throw it in. That's what we do. Usually it's fine. Um, it is not this time. the only old one. <laughs> yeah, I think the so. Other the, other one, the other one I threw in was the Oakland United. Um, which we did get reasonably fresh. I just forgot we got a black They're, they're yeah. actually all reasonably fresh because yeah. we went to Hen House not too long ago. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We also did Tom Firm that same yeah. day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the week before, I think, yeah. was Oakland United. We picked up the yeah. Dunlow, yeah. Um, I think, um, this week. Last weekend, we were up in Napa. Okay, you got that one. Um, not in that, but uh, we're up in Murphy's. Uh-huh. Pick up the Murphy's, Murphy's yeah. um, and then there's one other one here that uh, I just cannot come up with right now. Um, Brand-wise. Um, but there yeah, two so in-houses? Mm-hmm. Was there just one? So, yeah. We're not rating number two, so we're on to your number three. On to your number three. Um, wow. Which I really like. It's a very The color and the head on. This was my favorite smelling beer. Okay, hold on. Th- does this kind of remind <laughs> Does it kind of remind you of Pepsi? No. Not at all. No. That's not I tried. I'm not sure where you get that. Um, it's part of the carbonation. But here's, and, and it does, here's what I would say. I think this is almost a perfect example of what you want a black lager to be. It's got a good amount of malt, a good amount of chocolate and, and smoke, but it's still crisp. It's not, it's Heavy. not dull. Yeah. You know, it doesn't just kind of sit there. It's, it's got a good little per- crispiness it to it. I like it a lot. Yeah, no, and it does. That's my point. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't layer there. It's just a quick little punch of flavor, a little bit of aftertaste. But it's. So I don't. I don't refreshing. think. I don't necessarily think the taste is better than number one personally. Um, I think the aftertaste is absolutely better than number one. I think the aftertaste is like stellar. Like it, it sits on the saying. tongue. It stays there. It actually has an aftertaste. And most of the times we drink these beers, 
and I don't notice a real aftertaste in them. I'll notice see, like a little bit, but it'll kind of sit there. It's not a flavor you can sort of use, you know. But I don't, and I don't, I don't see it that way I, because I, what I like about the aftertaste is it doesn't. I don't think it lingers oppressive. No, it doesn't linger oppressive. Like, there's like, enough there that so you know there's an yes. aftertaste. And you're getting this aftertaste flavor, like, and that's like I said, that's why I come in with like the Christmas. It's right. got a good yeah. sharp flavor to it. I'm gonna Which give one. Oh, the other beer we have is a track set. Um, so I like this better. I, I'm going to get the same there as 24. Um, I'm actually Give getting it. a 17 on aftertaste. I actually think that taste is really good. I'm, I'm giving it a 26 on taste and drinkability and a 17 on aftertaste. I think this is almost a classic 24. example of a bike. 21, 21, 41, <laughs> 49, 59. 84 for me over here. 4, 68, 78. It was also my favorite uh, smelling beer. So. 85. I, I don't. I don't think I have one of your glasses. What, which glass is your glass? We have nine. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna kind of save them to go back. And this stuff. fucking. This fucking producer, you guys, man. I know, right? She's, she's like. She's got today. an entire. She's literally taken over my fermentation fridge yep. for her own beers. I can't make my own beer right now because we've turned my fermentation <laughs> fridge into her <laughs> fucking beer fridge. That's true. I'm not even kidding you. Like, you know what? After the show, on my Facebook, post I'll picture. post a damn picture of that beer fridge. I agree. You should. I will on Instagram. Too. You know, I want to see how nice it is that you did that for her so that she could keep her beer separate. And so you fuckers didn't drink it all. The and you guys wouldn't the drink it accidentally. This. When Shane comes over, Shane accident. drinks a lot of beer. Yeah, the both of and you. Shane probably doesn't bring as much beer as he drinks, to be both fair. So I drink a lot of beer. Amber does not drink a lot of beer, but she wants to have a beer on occasion. So I will inevitably drink her beer. That's just what happens. And so she actually oh. drinks beer about as often as well as I drink beer. Except um, I only drink one. Except she'll have like one beer or two beers, but I'll have like three beers. So eventually I run out of beer and I start drinking her beer. That's what happens. It's going to happen. Because eventually happens. we're going to run out of money and I won't be able to afford to buy more beer. And then, you know, that's how it goes. But I will post a picture of her beer fridge. And then to top off this beer fridge, she, she orders her own special glasses, which she breaks like one a month of. And <laughs> then makes me buy her a new special glass. I still have to order my own as well. And the special glass she buys is like the thinnest glass of all time. And they only hold like 10 ounces of beer. No, I only have one glass like that and I still have it. It's your third edition of that one glass. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, You're thinking and now she's asking me if I used one of her glasses, right? Because, you know, I mean, it's a beer glass, man. Look, I like snifters a lot. And I like glasses with stems, okay? I like stems. I like curves. She likes... Like oh, okay. modified pint glasses, effectively, is what she enjoys. Uh, that's her favorite kind of glass. I like stems. You know, she I likes, like the stem glass. She likes them long and fat. <laughs> There's all sorts of like that. jokes there. <laughs> Just like that. That's a good head on that one. I agree. It's actually a good port. Amber does a great job of head. She does. That's what I'm told. I mean, that's pretty much evidence right there. <laughs> that's going to go on YouTube. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big bigger number four. <laughs> If I were good at this, I could cut that part out, but I'm not, so I'm not going to. <laughs> this is a... Uh... Oh, Amber's got a great beer. She uh, she literally just drank a beer, and she looked up, and she goes, ooh. Um, so apparently it's very good. Um, it's a very black uh, black container. Um, uh, yeah, of course. Shane. <clears throat> we would love to try this beer. Eat that Angry. one. I would, I would recommend some water first, Corey. Oh, yeah. Because you've got a lot of smoky. Yeah, this is an Angry Did that show the name? What's the name of that one? What mask? Oh, that's the name of the beer? Mm -hmm. oh. Did you say WAP? What <coughs> mask? Oh, what mask? My bad. I thought it was WAP mask. But, you know. When we put this on YouTube, can what you give it? it a rating? <laughs> I already marked it's it as not okay for children. It definitely is an R. I don't know. <laughs> mm. I've only said good things. Uh, no, this is an Anchorage beer. It's actually really good. Oh, wow. Um, which okay, is not, I've got a decent amount of Anchorage beer, and usually their beer is like, okay. I think it's a little overpriced, but that's mostly because they have to ship it here from Alaska. Um, so, so, Anchorage. It's good though. It's good. That's really that good. Really, it's really I agree. Good. That's really good. Uh, that is what mask from Anchorage Brewing. Uh, I remember only about one, so that will not be being included inside of a taste test. All right, we're drinking beer number four. That's a double too. Mm -hmm. I'm not impressed by this beer. <clears throat> it's a little flat. Like yeah. not flat in like carbonation wise, but like the flavor is just a little flat. Yeah, it's, it's, the flavor's probably a little worse than the other two. I think. Yeah, it's and it, the aftertaste is barely there. It just doesn't. It, it's. I mean, it's not bad. This is not a bad. Beer. No, but um, I, I, what I'm. But you're right. It's flat. It's not. It's not inspiring. It's really, you know, it tastes like you know you would think a Budweiser would taste. You know what I mean? Just not a whole lot there. It's just also a, a lager. <clears throat> also a lager. Technically a pilsner, but yes. No, it's not. It's a lager. Of course, it's a pilsner. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. 
I don't drink it, so I'm, so I'm going to go one point below number one because I like this one a little less. I'm going to go 23. I'm going to hurt it more on the aftertaste because there really is none. I'm going to go 14. And I'll go 22 on drinkability because of it. I want 75 on this one. Oh, it's definitely my third favorite beer of the um, 40, of the three we're, we're actively rating. Like, it's fine. It's a fine beer. I would not feel bad. I'm not going to feel bad even when we finish this. Well, actually, we probably can't because all these good 80 ounces, right? So we actually probably don't have any beer to finish, which is nice. No, there's, no we only had one small can. I oh, these don't do ounces. Oh, you don't fill them up all the way because because uh, someone because Shane and then small can. Oh yeah, yeah. someone spills. All right, all right. So uh, so I get that at seventy five as well. I said our scores are really coming online lately. We need something. We're going to need kettle sours again, so our scores can be like. Super I agree. Good. I agree. I think I think we'll get more variants in Oktoberfest because you tend to like the Meritsons and short beers sure. and stuff. Oktoberfest lineup is pretty mainstream, so we'll see how that goes. I do have a couple imports in it though, so that's nice. I have a Mars in the family. Can you drink it? Really, I you are. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. There's one. no smoke here, right? Mm -mm. It almost has the the going off taste, you know what I mean, where it's starting to get. Nope. I'm not getting bad. that. <coughs> Kelly. <coughs> Yay. I think it's fine. No, I don't. I, don't. I, I think it's probably on par with the previous one. I agree with you. I'd like it maybe just a touch less, so I'll go 22. I think the actress is slightly better on it than the previous one, on the first one. I, I um, agree with that, too. So I'm gonna, my, it's going to be the previous one by one. <coughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tied with the previous one. Alright, well, last beer coming, I guess. 44. We're tearing through these, which is good. We really want these to be like 30-ish minutes. Oh, no, I gave it one more point. 76. Alright, alright. Uh, I guess it's 20, 76. Because I get uh, an extra point on that uh, after this one. Not a lot. There's fruit, too. Don't give out the fruit. And number six. She knows it exists. She just doesn't want to eat it. Oh, this beer's on fire. This has got a much better aftertaste. I'm going to drink some water and try to get this. This has got a much better aftertaste. Yeah, this is good beer. Yeah. So I think this one's good, yeah. I mean, they're all good beers, so I'm going to be fair. Uh, I think this might be the best beer. I think it is the best beer. I, I'm agreeing with you. It's not like, it's not like fantastically <clears throat> better than the previous beer. Um, the you previous mean the number beer. three? Um, yeah, the number three. It's not hugely better. It's I think that the flavor is just a little bit better, though. Uh, generally, these are all pretty similar tasting beers. Um, I agree. Which hasn't been the case in any of our other tastings. Like every other evening IPA, sub IPA, those are all very different in flavors. Um, black lagers probably also taste very similar though. Yeah, no, realistically speaking, most lagers are going to taste very similar until you start adding junk. Yeah. Which we're still going to do. We will add junk. We definitely need to do that. There won't be no lager though. <coughs> no black lager. No, it means like that. It some, which is, I'll swipe a little bit longer. I think it is. Yeah, I think it's just a little better. I'm not calling it like a ton better. 34. Uh, I'm gonna give it one more point though. Probably it's gonna be available a little. Sure gave it an 88 better. as our beer of the day. Well, your beer of the day, I finished scoring. Nah, it's, it's beer of the day. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, just eight. Oh. We were talking about footy. He said, Go pies, go pies. I like got my Collings with a little beer koozie, ready to go. I just don't know when they start. 85, 85. All right, so. Um, so you gave it the same score. Yeah, our scores are very similar today. Oh, no, you gave it a point more than, yeah. One point more than the other So here's a recap of my scores. Uh, beer number one, um, which actually should just do the recap of the cans, right? Yes, I agree. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's it for our tasting. Um, producers are going to get the cans. Um, skip beer number two. Um, you can dump these if you want to dump these. Please dump these. Please dump these. Please dump these. Please dump these. Wow. Shut down. We need a water. Yeah, so I'm just going to shoot at my cats. <laughs> That would be fun, wouldn't it? Oh, oh no. Psh, psh, psh. Really? He has one, two, three. One, three. Why? The ring. Then Tom Park. And then Park 7. And then you. Oh, wow. We can ride it again. Man. These guys are on fire. They, are, they definitely are. All right, let's talk about our beers. Beer number one. You want to do this one, Corey? Um, yeah, you can do one. You okay. can do your side. Hen House. Brewing Company. It's called, this one's called Sip Life. Plus, you speak slower, so people don't understand you. But that's all right. 
Uh, it was born on or beard on or tanned on uh, July 15th, and they say it should last 90 days, so we're well within that window. Uh, we love Hen House. We talk about them all the time. Uh, I love their can art, always have. Um, but, you know, good beer. What is it? I'm trying to find the percentage. That's the word. 5.1, I think, is what I read on it. I think. Somewhere. I love that. You're just like. Uh, I don't know. I can't see it. But anyway, love me some Hen House. All right, all right. So, yeah, no, normally you read the cans. And I There's talk nothing about, to read. Then I talk about the brewery. So, I see how this works here. Um, There's nothing to read. I swear to God, I now saw that. They almost it's always hidden. do a story. It's hidden because we looked at it online. Did we really? It's cool art, though. Homie it looks cool. straight savage. You want to hand it to me? A little fat lip, though. The underwear says the black metal. It just says what's brief. Wait, mm -hmm. 5 point eight. Oh, 5 point eight. Oh, wow. Okay. 5 point eight. 5 point eight. All right. So it's funny. You were like, well, within the date. And I was like, well, within the date. What month is it again? <laughs> <laughs> right, All right. So Hidden House. Let's talk about Hidden House. Okay. Hidden House. They're out of Santa Rosa, California. Um, as mentioned previously on shows, because we love Hidden House, so we've done several of them. Uh, they have two facilities. Their primary facility slash brewery is located actually in Santa Rosa, kind of on the outskirts. It's really not a whole lot around it. Um, they do have a nice outdoor section. Probably seats 60 or 70. Yeah, you yeah. really filled it up, probably. Uh, indoor bar section is pretty wide open space-wise. Probably fits 20 or 30, maybe. There's not a ton of seating in there. Um, probably not even 30. They do tours of the brewery. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can sign up for brewery tours there. True. Um, they do have the best beer festival, um, at least the one time we had to go. It's called Freshable. Um, it should be happening right about literally now. now. Um, so book. if you're in the Bay Area um, next year, go to Freshable. Uh, we will be pimping Freshable as far as uh, All the time. When, uh, when we finally get around to ordering tickets yes. for that. Um, so, no, it's a great spot. They make a lot of good beers. They know for their IPAs typically. Um, mm -hmm. And they're probably – a lot of people are going to know them for Big Chicken. Which is their um their huge double IPA? They're fresh, yeah. Their huge double IPA. They yeah. they make it for Beer Week every year. Sorry. And then they uh, brew it, and then um they send it out to all the places right around Beer Week, and no one gets a keg that's any older than literally like three days. Yep. That's you get it for about a week. Drink the shit out of it, and yeah, it's, uh, it's good. The can it's very good. always sells out. Can releases do sell out. Oh, their other location is in Petaluma, across street from Lagunitas, which is actually where we picked this one up. They um, are not open right now. Neither spot is actually nope. open for in, in, in location drinking. Consumption. Yeah, consumption. That's a good word. <clears throat> uh, no use to mean tuberculosis for some reason. I know, right? I didn't really get that. Well, it really did. <laughs> it did. I never understood what <laughs> someone died of consumption. That means they ate something? Brett, Brett, why is it called consumption? Yeah, I don't think Brett's watching. I'm heartbroken. I'm going to let him know. He's never going to hear the end of it from me. That's messed up. That's messed up. I should write these And again, we always do point out that one of the reasons we love about Hen House is their beer tenders come to the table and flat out explain everything to you. We love, love, love. Those. And at the bar when you order it, too. <clears throat> everything, yeah. Beer number two, Dunlow Brewing, dressed to spill with the cute little doggies. Beer number three, I think. I oh, they're, sorry. Yeah, this is beer number three. Uh, brewed and packaged at Dunlow Brewing in Davis, California. Shout out to the wife's alma mater. Uh, I actually like Davis a lot. We haven't been there in a long time, but I used, when we'd go, I liked it. The downtown was great. A lot of walkable places. It's changed a lot. But I, we haven't been there in 20-something years. So I've we never been. Definitely go. I've never been. There are several breweries in the Davis slash um, shit near Davis area. Um, <laughs> that, we uh, attempted to go. <laughs> that I wanted to go to. Uh, it's on our list, right? We almost we tried to go a couple weeks ago after our anniversary dinner. And um, the world was on fire. That's so, correct. Um, it was literally blocking the, the freeway. The freeway was actually to, on fire. To get to the Davis area to try out. Um, well, that was actually Fairfield. But the, Fairfield is like relatively near to Davis. It's another. Yeah, yeah we couldn't. So I mean, fast. the freeway was um, closed. Dressed to spill. Okay, so uh, I don't have a lot to say about Dunlow. This is probably the first Dunlow beer I've ever drank in I've, my entire life. I've never even life. heard of them until we bought the can. Um, so I can't tell you how great they are or what their facility is like, um, which is but, really kind of a rarity for me, honestly. We will. Figure it out. Um, one thing uh, we will tell you, and Shane will post a trip report on beersplanning.com. I will. That's his yes. job. He does trip reports. 5.0%, uh, 5.0% alcohol. And all it says on it is not bad for a lager. But I do like the canner. You know, it got second for us. So I'd say it not did. bad for a lager is a completely reasonable uh, reasonable statement, to be honest with you. When was it canned? Is it said? It, oh, let's see. Is it a lot of No. No canning date. No canning. And we picked this up in Murphy's, though, at... Um, the restaurant okay. 70s that's like a bunch of taps I can we talk about last couple of we did talk about it we, we talked about, about all the Murphy show but I can't remember the name of the app something house wasn't it 
I don't remember. I don't remember. Uh, this is terrible TV. We liked it. Uh, the dog is cute. No, so. The doggies. I have an answer for your consumption question. <laughs> oh, great. So tuberculosis is uh, normally, you know, you cough up blood, you have mucus, high fever, and a severe weight loss. Um, so they call it consumption because of the weight loss. Because you're the consuming your Because you're, yes. you're coughing up blood Science. and your weight loss. Science tips on ear strength. Well, thank you very much. I love answers. All right, great. You, you're doing the beer reading. I'll do, I'll I, I'll do, talk, I talk about beer reading. Okay, okay. So next one, Pond Farm Brewing Company, Dark Mask Black Water. Uh, Dark Mask. Brewed by Pond Farm. Let's see. It's 4.2%. Really wow. light. Um, nothing else on it. Love the can art on this one, too. This is really pretty. Uh, we did pick this one up at the brewery. At Pond Farm. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's go. There's not a whole lot. Pond Farm. Let's talk about Pond Farm. Pond Farm is located in San Rafael, kind of in a downtownish area. There are some things near it where you can uh, grab mm -hmm. some food mm -hmm. um, and some other drinks. It's really the only brewery particularly close. It's a great stop if your goal is to kind of go to Santa Rosa because mm -hmm. um, you pass through there. Um, small, it's reasonable. It's actually, the inside is actually pretty big, but it's kind of closer. Now, the outside mm -hmm. section is small, probably fits 20. Yeah, but um, not with social distancing. We were there, they probably could have fit 20. Six outside? Or... I don't think they could have gotten maybe 50, 50. 15. No, because they have those ones outside that's great too. You're right. I forgot about the seating up front. Yeah. But in that side little the alleyway, yeah. I don't think you could have gotten a whole lot. They, and they do have food there. They, they do have the it's kind of a it's a throw in food so they can be open. Obviously, yep. it's not like it's a full kitchen. Um, I thought the nachos were fine. Yeah. Um, the brewery itself is um, it's really good. They're known for their, we've said this before, they're known for a GBAF bronze for their hazy IPA last year, yes. um, which was their first year um, in production. Mm -hmm. They were a first year brewery and they managed to get a bronze at the GABF, um, which really sort of pumped their profile. A, a I pretty, agree. A pretty good amount. Um, I agree. We've had hazy, it was called Devil's Gulch. Yes. Um, and it is actually quite good. Uh, we tasted them in our triple tasting as well. We did. Um, both of those we've done this year actually have included the compound triple, I think. And we we we've, we've really rated their beers very highly. Yeah, we, we really enjoy them. The owners are really nice. Yep. Um, I know when uh, after last year's uh, San Francisco Beer Festival, I emailed them and I was like, "We're trying to pick up all these triples." And he was like, "We'll set one aside." Yeah. Turns out they need to, but it's beer week and you never know if the triples go fast. So if you can they reserve do. one, you just sort of reserve one. Yep. So, um, so they're very good though. It's a nice spot. And yeah, once it opens up, they had a live band when we were there. It was like a. Not country, what is that? Bluegrass band. Bluegrass, yeah. Bluegrass. It was, I thought they sounded really good. You know, like I said, the whole environment, I really enjoyed. So Randy, uh, not Randy, I'm sorry, Eugene, Eugene said 5.1 is legal, but 4.2 is illegal. And we were That's going, for the beer run? We're, we're going to get to that at the end of the show. That is directly related to beer run. And I'm just going to say right now, not doing black loggers for a beer run. Because that sounds up your mile? terrible. We will, we will talk about the beer mile um, at the end of the race. Um, at the end of the, of the evening, um, I do have a couple of small <laughs> announcements about that. Just uh, for those interested. Beer number five, track seven, Phantom Murmur. Again, love this can art too. 5.0% alcohol. Nothing written on the can. Let's see if there's a date on it. Nope, no date. This either. one's a little <laughs> older. It's a little older. Well. It's a little older. Um, I picked it up at the brewery when I did that big track seven pickup. Um, it also included like the, um, that included that really nice um, strawberry kettle sour. Um, as well as some other stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Included, oh, yeah. Um, well, that's right. I remember so, that. All right, so Track 7 Brewing, uh, they actually have two locations. They have a recreation location in kind of on the industrialish area of Sacramento. Um, that is their original location. It's really small. It's um, kind of, you know those sh sort of strip mall places where you've got a lot of auto shops. Um, you know, they've all got kind of roll-up roll up doors. It's regular parking. Um, it's a spot like that inside. They've got an, an extra section for seating. Um, I want to say it probably seats 30 or 40 probably. Cause they've got two little seating sections, I think. Um, they usually have a good food truck out there. Um, Nash and Proper has been there a few times. Love us, Nash. Uh, you know, we love Nash Shout and Proper. People Proper. watching the show, good. Good. <laughs> we do. Um, it's almost a spiritual thing. Their other location, uh, the other tracks and location is fucking fantastic, though. Uh, over in the Tonus, uh, which is like this town, like just a little bit north of Sacramento. Um, that is a big ride. That's their new primary brewing facility. It is a Full on distribution -y size warehouse. It is a big joint um, with a nice outdoor patio, a bunch of seating inside, a good looking bar. Um, their tasting, the way they do tasters is a little different than other places when you do a taster there. Um, you spend $12, I think, for four tastes. Uh, they give you a glass, um, a snifter actually, 
And then um, they give you four bottle caps. You give them a bottle cap. They fill your snifter whatever, oh. like halfway. So it doesn't look like And you drink it. And then um, you go back and forth. You just keep exchanging your bottle cap for your next tasting. And you get to keep the glass. Oh, wow. So that's actually included in their tasting, in their tasters. For um, 12 bucks? It's like 12, no. it's 12 or 15. No, it's really, it's really, really well priced. It's, honestly, it's really well priced. No, it's true. I don't remember ever keeping the glass. And we have like one of them in there. There's one in there. Oh. Those, uh, uh, Mike Hess does that. I don't taste it. I don't taste that. Mike Hess does that with their tasters too. They give you the, the paddle, you get the glass, they give you a poker chip, and you turn in the poker yeah. chip to get whichever color glass you want. Yeah, so um, that's how Trackstar works. So it's, it's a nice spot. Uh, they make a lot of good beers. They're, um, we tasted their triple this year. We did. Um, which I believe we rated okay. I thought it was okay. We did not like the quad. We did not like the quad. Yeah. That, but that's Amber's team. Amber does the quad. Uh, as mentioned, we did taste their pale sours. That was needed. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah uh, was mentioned was their sour. They make uh, their kale sour. is pretty good. It's, it's a good little spot. I don't think I've been there. You may not have been to either one. I don't feel I don't like we've so. stopped. Well, we've... I know I haven't been to the Zemus one. So. No, you're right. Because we didn't stop at Track 7 last time. Well, we stopped at Device as our last yes. stop because Track 7 was closed. Yep. Um, you may not have actually been at Track 7 yet. So. I haven't been there. Hello, it's Randy. Good, it's a good spot. We're it's a good spot. You, Randy, when it cools off, we're drinking uh, barrel aged with you. We've got Outside, six baby. barrel ages. Um, we've all picked them out. They are all bourbon barrel aged beers. Um, we've got a really nice selection. Uh, I could pull them out and show them all to you, but then I would be off camera and get weird without a nap. Um, so we are going to do those with Randy, though. Inevitably, so that is the plan. So, all right, we're gonna move on to beer number five. Beer number six. Sorry, six. Oakland United just says black lager, five point two percent, twenty four IBUs. Don't know why you put IBUs on a black lager. You said that on every Oakland United beer. And just we did like we did like their pilsner. And you were like, I don't know why you put IBUs on a pilsner. I don't know either. Um, let's see. So it says canned on June 26, twenty twenty. So it's a little towards the end of life there. It looks like two weeks. It looks like two weeks before they last one. It's a well, three weeks, but yes. But it's, if you do three months, that's yes. Two, two weeks is like three weeks. <laughs> yes, it's true. I know. Like right there. It also like, says also got a little stamp in there. It says BLM. BLM on the bottom there. So uh, basic can art, but we love this place. Corey will talk about it. Okay, so Oakland United. They are located in Jack, London area of Oakland. Um, they are a relatively small spot. When we went, um, it was during COVID. They had three or four seats outside with some, some cover. They had a bar area um, that was um, relatively small and compact as well. This is not a big brewery. Uh, but they're friendly. They have a lot of can options. They had a really nice selection of beers. I want to say we rated their Pilsner super good during our Pilsner taste. We did. We did. Um, so in general, the beers we've had from Oakland United, we've been very, very happy with. Their can prices and their keg prices were great. Their keg prices were absolutely Really, really good. Awesome. Just um, unbelievable. So price. if you're looking for like a decently priced keg of a solid the black beer, lager like 60 like bucks? 60 bucks is yeah. really cheap. But the crazy. Half, the half was like 60 bucks. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, so if you're looking for, if you have a keg and you're looking for a good beer to fill your keg but you don't want to break the budget with the $110, you know, space dust or something, um, head out there, pick up one of their kegs, um, support them. They're a small, obviously they're probably one of the smaller ones. They're I don't know about Dunlow. They're likely the smallest of the five we're tasting today. Yeah, I don't know Dunlow for sure. But they're definitely this is a fairly small large. Facility. This one's a small facility, but it's 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 kind of hitting up. This is off. Uh, this is still really under the radar. Prior to our going there, um, about in June actually. Yep. Right. Or right. 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 right, right that came. Um, we hadn't really heard of them. We had them at a couple of beer festivals. Mm -hmm. Um, and generally, that's about it. But um, they've uh, they've really impressed me. Um, mm -hmm. they're one of our new. They're one of my kind of new must stops if you go to that area. I agree. Uh, I would hit usually. If we're in that area, if we're in the Jack London area, I think the two to hit are probably going to be Oakland United Beer Works. And um, probably original pattern. Yes. Um, which are probably the two best original Although patterns. I do, like, I do like the other I'm not one. saying Federation's bad. Federation no, no, makes the, good the beer. tiny one. What's that? The, the, the really tiny one. Oh, uh, talking about Oakland, Oakland Beer Works. Yeah, Oakland Beer Works. I just, the vibe. No, the, the vibe is great. The, the, the beer was beer was okay. I'm saying beer for beer. Like, I but think, yeah. the vibe was hella cool. The old, where they, they had the punk rock concerts and dude was spinning vinyl. Yep. Remember that, Denise? Oh, yeah. Love that place. It was, like I said, beer wasn't great, but yeah. Oakland Beer Works is one of the older breweries in Oakland, is my understanding. Um, that was a good spot, but we have not, they didn't have any cans though, so we've, we've never actually done a tasting of them on the show. So. No. Um, all right, so uh, to recap our scores here, um, mm -hmm. my top beer by a point was Oakland United's Black Lock. Mine as well, 80, 88. And then my number two beer was actually this Dumlo. Mine as well, 85. Uh, my number three beer was the Hen House. As well, 79. Uh, number four, I went with the track seven. I went with the Pond Farm. 
And then by one point, I went with by Lee. one point. Yeah, one point between the Jackson and the Pop Farm. But I think, I think it's pretty clear to me that the two standouts would definitely be Oakley United and Adema. Mm -hmm. um, the other, these are all good beers. I would not dump any of these beers out. <laughs> They're all very good nope, beers. I'll finish these. Um, so I would recommend Black Lagers to most people. If you're not a big IPA drinker, um, if you're into well, lagers, or if you're like your normal beer is like a, an 805, or um, or like if, like if you a, like if you like the the simpler beers, like say not big, overpowering, smack you in the face with the hops or the bitterness, or you know, uh, or you're not a big sour you know person where you just this just gigantic flavors, a nice sipping beer, but it's got some flavor from the smoke. These are great beers. The black lagers are a good way to go. Not gonna get you drunk. Nope. Um, not gonna destroy your taste buds. I think. Provides a nice difference in flavor, I think, when you're your standard sort of lighter five ounce beers. Yeah. I think they're better than blondes in general because I find blondes to be really plain to me most of the time. I kind of find them a little on the sweeter side too, and I just don't usually enjoy that. Yeah, I like so the I like the smoky flavor in beers. Though, I agree, um, personally. So I, agree. I, I would recommend black auction to most people. I would too. All right, so that's our tasting for today. Uh, let's talk about the beer mile. Beer mile. All right, so the beer mile. Uh, in here in Mountain House. Um, we're going to do a beer mile. Um, it is an unofficial beer mile. We're not closing out any streets. We're not closing out any parks. We're doing it on public land. Um, bring your own beer. Uh, bring your own beer. beer. Um, put it in a brown paper bag. Because, um, you know. We will have lawns here. Stuff. We will have um, tables. And we will we have will, a timer. We will. We're going to get a big clock, hopefully. Um, hopefully our, our friend... Uh, Friend will loan us a big clock for um, for use for this. We're going to have a timer. It's going to run some timers. So the beer mile works like this: you will drink a 12 ounce can of beer. You will run 400 meters. You will drink another one of these things. You will run 400 more meters. And then another one. And then 400 more meters. And then another one. And then 400 more meters. And that's it. Your time is done. You ran one mile. You're drinking four beers. Uh, there is an alter version where you run point where where you run uh, 1.5 miles and you drink six beers. We're not doing an alter version of ours, all right? We just want to have a little bit of fun, a little good time. I yep. don't really want to get drunk because we're not on private property. Um, <laughs> so I do. But it should be walkable for most people. Well, it is walkable for most people, but still, like you know, I mean, I've seen Eugene after six beers. Yes, Eugene after six beers. Entertaining. Ass. Yeah, yeah. I don't need him running into people's cars and stuff. So yeah, it's fine. I don't want to have to rescue him from the pond. That's correct. That would be bad. That would yeah. be bad. So um, uh, for normally you need a beer that is above five percent. Um, at least one person has messaged me so far and asked if they could just drink a regular beer like a Coors or something like that, which comes in at something like four point two. And I said it was fine. It's not an official beer mile. I don't. She whatever she drinks, kind of like a four. Um, so I said it was fine. It's just um, a girl who hasn't ran with us before. So oh. I thought it sounded fun. So I said, it's fine with me. I don't really care. Yeah, it's not official. The cares? reality is you can come, and if you just bring carbonated seltzer water, we would let you run carbonated Absolutely. seltzer water. I don't care. Um, just a pet. The point is to run while you've got a bunch of carbonated liquid in your in your stomach and try not to puke. Um, and that is part of it. If you puke, or yeah. not even puke, just spit up the beer, run is over. Beer's a thing. Uh, so I would suggest beer. Um, if you want to use a lighter beer, that's fine with me. Um, if you want to use a hard seltzer, like a white claw, that's fine with me. I will warn you ahead of time. Um, last year, last year at the uh, Dusty Bottoms Beer Mile. Shout out Dusty Bottoms. Shout out Dusty Bottoms. They're dope. They're doing the Beer Mile this year for COVID reasons. Obviously. Um, <laughs> there was about, I want to say six or seven people who did white claw. Yes. Um, I think it was mostly girls and like one guy. I think and so. I will tell you right now that every single person who ran with white claw at the Dusty Bottoms Beer Mile puked. Everyone. And I don't mean coughed up a little foam and got DQ'd like fucking smooth here. <laughs> I mean like straight up puked. Um, Violently. It so, was, it was so an don't, impressive sight. Don't bring the white claw. I, right? I would vote against if the you, white claw. If you show up to our beer mile with the white claw, we're going to let you drink. But know this, you are responsible for your own puke. Luckily we're doing that on trail. Up. So I'm going to put a couple trash bags around so hopefully you know people can run over to the trash bags to puke. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, none of the volunteers are picking up your puke, right? That's, That's right. not a thing. The volunteers are there to uh, give you a water bottle, hopefully, because they aren't really that expensive, and to keep track of your times. And also to make sure you don't run to the fucking street. Because <coughs> uh, yeah. part of it is on the sidewalk. That's right. Uh, but yes, yeah, so don't bring White Claw. I implore you, if you want to come and you want to have a good time, don't bring the White Claw. <laughs> That would be my advice. My recommendation, generally speaking, is simply to bring a basic Coors beer or a basic Budweiser beer. They come yep. at around 5.1. Yep. They're not that hard to drink. Uh, Pilsners and blondes. Yeah, like a lot of Pilsners and blondes. And you do want to do cans over bottles. Yeah, you have to do cans. So technically, the rules say you have to do cans. Right. Like in the official rules. Um, so that's good. Uh, personally, I've done it with a couple of different beers. I did um, a Cali Cream Ale one year. Mm -hmm. Done it was totally fine. Mm -hmm. 
And then, um, what did I do last year? I want to say I did um, a blonde. I did like the blonde from the Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, I thought someone that for you. Yeah, Maui Green Blonde. Yeah, Maui, right. I did the Maui Green Blonde last year. That was fine. Um, I did uh, Cali Creamin the year before that, which I yep. thought was fine. Um, you do not want your green to be ice cold. Nope. When you get to the thing, you want it to be cold, and when you get to the thing, you want to take it out. Put it in the sun. And let it heat up a little bit. Right? It does help. Because it turns out, it. turns out chugging 12 ounces of cold-ass beer is not that easy. Chugging 12 ounces of warm can. beer is actually not that easy. I wish they would let us put it in a glass. But do it anyway. Um, so that's the thing. We're doing that on Halloween. If you're interested, send me over a message. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to take eh, probably two hours max. Yep. We're going to set up, set up, we'll play some music. We're going to hope the cops don't come. And uh, we're going to have a good time. All right. That's pretty much it. Are you going to have a selfie camera on during the run? Uh, I know. Um, <laughs> People will all have their own cell phones. Yeah, so no, I, I, think, I think the question will be at the event whether people want to be recorded or not. There will not be an official recording of the event. Um, for legal reasons. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> as, as staff attorney, I think recording yourself, even committing what would be an infraction, is probably not the best thing. To do. We might if we might be able to get someone to record um, the running at Just the spot the on the opposite side of where you actually drink the beer. Right. We, we will not be doing any recording of the actual beer drinking. Uh, if you want to take photos of your own beer drinking, well, that'd be really weird. If you want whoever's with you to take photos of you drinking the beer, hey, that's fine. That's fine. You can record yourself drinking beer. Just don't get anyone else in. If that is on you, I am not recording anyone else drinking beer. I'm not recording me drinking beer. Okay? Just so we're clear. Uh, my wife will likely take photos of me drinking beer. But that doesn't actually prove that I'm drinking the beer. It just proves I have a beer can to my face. That is correct. Yeah. So, you know, it would be accurate. It's circumstantial, which is still admissible, but it's not direct evidence. And again, because it is only an infraction, technically they're supposed to witness it. So you're not supposed to be able to get a ticket for recording it. But still. Better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. Uh, I wish we had a private location to do this at, um, but uh, we don't. So we found yeah, a we spot. Bought, we haven't bought our farm yet. We found a spot in Mountain House. It's 0.26 miles a lap. Um, it's about 60% trail. Yep. Uh, which is really, really going to be a good spot. Um, about half of it is shaded. Streets, right? No. Yep. About half of it is shaded. You have to make a, a tight, a couple of tight right turns. Um, but it's only four beers, and if you can't make a tight right turn after four beers in ten minutes, um, you're really need to call your doctor because the alcohol shouldn't even hit you that fast. No, it's usually the right right after you sit down after finishing the beer mile, you're like, ooh. Yeah. Now yeah. I feel it. Yeah, your your average your average beer mile is probably gonna be ten to ten to fifteen minutes. Yep. Um, I think if you were at fifteen, right? No, no, I beat it. I didn't have really a time. Like the first year I did it, I did the mile in like ten and a half minutes. It was well, damn, it was like damn near like a mile PR while drinking four beers. Uh, I wanna say last year I did something like twelve and a half. Yeah. I caught that dude in the end though last year. You did. I told him that I almost fell, but whatever, I caught that dude. <laughs> It's like a savage. So the video is great. The video is great. I agree. Um, so that's the deal. If you're interested, let us know. Um, MH Runners on Facebook. Um, yep. That's the name of the group. If you want to join us, uh, we've got uh, 300 ish people. Um, plenty of runs. Uh, there, yep, was a half, runs. there was a half marathon literally yesterday, yesterday performed by somewhere between 5 and 10 of the group. Yep. Um, there will at be 6 a.m. There will be, a, there will be a, an unofficial MH Runners half marathon in January um, where I'm going to set up a couple of aid stations. Um, I need volunteers for that. Um, Hopefully our producers will help. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so we'll anything see. else? I think that's it. I don't have anything else. Too. No. Any questions? We're good? No questions. Well, thank you all very much for joining us once again for here yes. for Beer Slamming. Um, next weekend, we're doing Santa Barbara beers. Correct. Beers Robert from Santa Barbara. Barbara. Yes. Uh, all from one brewery, actually, whose name is yes. escaping me. So. I don't remember. I don't know. But yeah, Santa that. Barbara beers and then planning on... Two weeks out is going to be Oktoberfests. Yes, right? we're doing these Oktoberfests, uh, which right now I have six mainstreams, and we'll probably okay. try to pick up a local. So we might have eight, eight beers for Oktoberfest if you might guess an Oktoberfest beer can for five bucks. Maybe maybe that'll be a good one for a guest. Yeah, they're only five percent. That's true. That's Whatever. True. Whatever. Uh, if you do are interested in guest starring on our show, be sure to send us a message. We could use a guest star for a few shows. Um, we really don't need to drink this much beer ourselves. Um, we'll drink this much beer after the show anyway. Me. Um, so. If you're interested in joining us for a show, let, yeah, us, know. let us know. Let us know what kind of beer you like to drink. We'd be glad to have you. Ideal for styles. Also let us know. Uh, that's about it, I think. Thank Anything you for else? watching. Thank you for watching it. And uh, everyone have a great day.